Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Just feels like forever since I've been with you and having a cup of coffee. So I've got to pour myself a cup right now and tell you that I'm going to show you today how to do something with a mandala. A lot of people have liked doing these layered mandalas and I'm going to show you something new that I've just made. I'm sure other people have made it, but I just made this one today. So in the past, I showed you guys how to make this one. It can fold down so that it can be a card and it fits in the regular size envelopes that I always use and it's cute as can be and I just made it out of white this was my prototype well today I went ahead and made one out of many colors so that it's the layered mandala and I think it turned out really super cute so this is what I'm going to show you how to do today but again I'm so glad you joined me I'm glad I'm back to feeling like using my machine I don't know about you guys but I felt a little sluggish a little downish and I haven't been uh, making as many things so today when I turned on my machine and cut this it just really really made me happy so hope you'll join me thanks okay the first thing I wanted to do was to tell you where I got the butterfly that I used I happened to get mine from the store here um, let's see if I double click there we go from the store here in Silhouette. And I just got the studio version since I have a Cameo and that's what I'm using. If you wanna get this and use it for your Cricut machine, you'll have to click on this SVG button right here and get that. And it'll cost just about a quarter more or something like that. Anyway, this is what I use. I'm sure you can find other butterflies in other places, but this one is number, design ID number 2647 if you wanna find it. So let me go ahead and open it up now in Silhouette and show you what to do. Okay, here I am in Silhouette. And what I want to do is I want to come up here to my library because that's where I've saved this. And I actually have them up here already for me. This is the one that I purchased. And this one is one that I've already completed a long while ago. I'm not even sure when, does it tell? No, I called this the butterfly easel card. So, Let's take a look at that for just a minute. So what I did was I took two pieces and I attached them together here. And these green lines just represent where I'm going to fold or where I'm going to score. But you don't really have to do that. You can just eyeball it and do it. So let's get started by opening this up by double clicking on it. And there it comes in just like that. See, I think if I move this, it's going to, yeah, that's what I thought. I need to uh, go ahead, control Z to put that back and make this one piece. I'm gonna group this all together. And I'm just gonna move that off to the side first. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy right here and I'm gonna click on him so I get this little rotation button. Hold down my shift key because if I hold down my shift key when I rotate, it, can, it only rotates like in certain degrees, like it won't stop right here very well. It stops, see how it jumps into place? And that's what I want it to do. So once I have this one done, what I'm going to do is with it highlighted, I'm going to come over here to the replicate panel. Looks like, a, to me it looks like a flying cigar. Right over here. And I'm going to say mirror. And I want to mirror another one to the right of that. So again, I came over here to the replicate panel that looks like a flying cigar to me and I clicked on it and then I said mirror to the right and you see what that did that duplicated one and moved it right to the right now what I want to do with this one right here is I'm going to click on it to select it and just using my arrow keys I'm going to click on this to make sure that those two are overlapping a bit because I'm going to go ahead and weld them together now so they will be the base of my card and that's all there is to it so I'm going to grab both of these and I'll say right click and weld. And now you'll notice that these are two pieces. And if you look down here at my table, you can see that I made those two pieces black. There's one piece and this is where it was attached. And here's the second. So that's the card can make it any color you want. I just thought black would look really pretty behind this. So the next thing that I do is I can just go ahead and color this if I want to. We'll just make it black. Okay. 
and then I can just move this off to the side because I'm actually done with that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this guy right here. Now, I'm going to follow the same example that I did before. I have one, two, three, four layers, four different colors in my card. Okay? So the very top color is this very first one right here, and I made it blue. So I'll click on this, and I'll just go ahead up here, and I'll make it blue. Oh, but look, it all got colored in. So what I need to do is I need to grab this guy and come up here to Object, Make a Compound Path, and that cuts out those pieces that I want cut out. Okay, the next color that I did was orange. So all I have to do for that is, again, to select my blue butterfly, come over here to the Offset panel. Looks like a star with an offset on it. And I'm going to click on that and click on the word offset. And that's too big of an offset. I don't want that large of an offset. So what I did on mine, and this is trial and error. You can try whatever you like. I changed mine right here. You can see where I'm kind of typing in right here. I changed mine to 0 0.05 and hit enter. Then that made my offset a lot smaller. So on mine now, this is going to be the orange one. So I'm going to come up here while that offset is selected and change its color to orange. Okay, so now I can move the blue piece off because I'm done with that right now. And I'm going to offset the orange piece. So on my sample here, I had the blue and then orange and then yellow. So I'm going to offset the orange piece, click on it, come over to the offset tool, the star with the offset on it, click on it, say offset, and I'm going to use the same offset size. So again, I'm just using my arrow or my backspace key to get over, and I'm going to make this 0.05 and hit enter. So what did we say? That one was going to be, we have the blue, and we have the orange, and now we're going to do the yellow. So I'm going to come up here while that offset is still selected and click up here and change it to a yellow color. Perfect. So now we have the orange and the blue and the yellow. But we want one more according to this. We want a pink. So once again, I'm going to take this guy right here, come over to the offset panel. It's still open. Offset. Change my offset to 0 0.05 again and hit apply, change its color to pink. And then I can put this over here. So that's all I have to do, right like that, and I am done. The only thing is some of these little holes here are way too small. So actually, even on my pink one, I think I just left it totally whole, didn't make any holes in it. Uh, it's up to you though, if you want to. I think I would leave mine without any holes. So what I would do is I would click on this, and come up here to Object, release the compound path, and that selects all these little pieces. Then all I have to do is right click and say Weld, and they're gone. So look at that, that's so cute. So now what I would do is, I would bring my card over here, just to try it out. Let's see how this is gonna look. Okay, this is the base of my card, and what I can do is grab all of these, center them and then while they're still selected say group and then just move this group oops it's got to go to the top so I have to right click and bring it to the front just like that and my card is done so now if I was cutting this out with my silhouette machine this is what I would do I would ungroup this and I would come over here to send. And I would change this to fill color. I'm going to send it by fill color. Now notice it has all the colors that are in my butterflies, right? It's got the black, blue, all these. Okay. Well, I'm just going to do them one at a time. So what I would do is uncheck all of these. And just do one at a time. So what I could do is I could start with the pink if I wanted to. 
and I'd probably bring the pink one up to the upper left hand corner right here because that's where it's going to cut on my cardstock and cut that out. I have auto cut, I have the auto blade, and I have cardstock heavy. And I know for my particular machine that I have to up this a lot and it works for me. I make it up to about an eight, the blade depth, and then that works for me. But you'll just have to try this with a test. Remember the test button down here. Try a test on yours before you go doing all of this. Okay, after, let's assume I cut this one, I would move it off to the side. And then I would choose, usually I have these over here, the ones to be done. And once they're done, they go to the right over here. So the next one, I would uncheck that one and maybe do the yellow one. And again, I would bring that right up here to the top. Like that. And cut that. Again, cardstock heavy. Auto cut, auto blade. Again, I would change my knife depth to an eight. And I would say send. Of course, that'd be after I loaded my media. Notice it says that. And again, when I'm done with that, move it off the mat, uncheck, and do the orange. And bring the orange one over. And it's as simple as that, you guys. And now I'll show you how you'll put it together. Okay, here are all the pieces that I'll need to make my card. As I said, the first one that I made was one that would fit into one of the regular envelopes that I always use for my A2 size cards. I get these at Staples, and you can see that it nicely fits in there, because this is one that I actually made to send to somebody. And you just put it together like this. Put some of the little legs in that little crack right there to make it stand up nicely. And there's this one, okay? But this one now I made larger because I'm going to make it for one of the cards for kids that we send out. If you're not familiar with cards for kids, be sure you check out my Facebook pages. Um, we talk about it there. It's a charity and we make cards and we send them to kids who have either been taken out of their home to foster care or who have been living in a bad situation, uh, maybe an abusive situation, they've been taken out of the home. So we just make them cards. doesn't say, hope things get better soon, or if they're sick, hope you get well soon. It's just to cheer them up, just to be like nothing is happening in their world. This is just a cheery card to give you encouragement. So here's this one. So the first thing you do with the base, remember that was the piece we put together in the beginning, is just fold it in half like that. The next thing that you do is, and here it is here in the white, so I folded it in half here. And then I'm going to fold this part, let's see, I folded it in half, and now I'm going to fold this one down in the center. So I'm just going to take this, and right where the wings are, right there where they fold in together, I'm going to fold this up. And this is why I'm saying you don't really need to put score lines, because you can certainly see where that's supposed to be folded. So again, right in the very center where the wings are, and then where the top wing meets the bottom wing on one of these. You fold like that. And then you can see how this is going to go together just like this. His little legs here are going to fit inside like that to make it stand up. Just like that. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do, we're done with this. Put this aside. We'll start working on this. So the first thing I would do is I would take my lowest piece, my base piece, my pink in this case, and I just put a stripe or two using my glue gun that I absolutely love. If you want to see about this glue gun, you can go ahead and see down below in my comments, I have this glue gun that I use as well as other links. And I really appreciate it when you use my links because it helps me be able to buy these things so I can um, demonstrate how to do stuff to you guys. So the next thing I would do is just take the next layer and just place it right on top. And the reason why I just put it there in the center is because even though these are mandalas and a lot of people like them that mash down like so you can just see the different layers i like since this is a butterfly to make it more three-dimensional just make it kind of look like it's flying so the only parts that i really like sticking is the very center where his body is then the next one that comes on is the orange so i can put a stripe or two of the um, glue the tape and put the orange down lining it up like that. Perfect. And then the last piece is the blue. Bring him over. 
and line him up just like that. And that's all there is to this. You can fluff these pieces up a bit if you'd like to. Just kind of bending them or curling them around a pencil if you want them more curly. Okay. And since I used the black for the backing of this one, what I did was I'm going to write my sentiment using a white jelly roll pen. So I'm going to take this now, and you know the piece here, this one, that you folded down like this. You're just going to put tape in the lower edge of this part right here because you're just going to tape this onto the lower edge. So I'm going to open this up. It's folding like this, and I'm going to put tape down here. Double stick tape. Of course, you can use wet glue if you want to. If that's what you have, that would work also. I just like using the glue or this uh, tape runner. Okay, here we go. So now I'll just take my guy over here again and just line him up on here like that. I hope I got him lined up well. Should stand up so I can see better. Just press it down. And then all I have to do is take these couple of legs back and bend them back and that was another place where you could have put a score line if you wanted to but I think you can figure out where to bend these to make it fit right like that and that is how it turns out just like this isn't that cute I think it's super adorable and so now I'm gonna think of a saying to put in here I haven't really researched it yet so I've got to think of something that I can put here. And maybe I'll even put some part behind over here. But when they get the card, of course, it'll be like this. And then they'll see the message inside. And if you wanted to have a sneaky message hidden inside, you know what you could do is put your message right up in here. Right? And that would be hidden. So it depends on what you want to do. Or you could even put your message on the back, your sentiment. So anyway, I think this is super cute. I hope you'll make some mandalas like this. And you can do this with all kinds of um, shapes to make them into cards by using that technique I showed on how to take the two of them, mirror it to the right, take one, mirror it to the right, and then just weld the two pieces, the two overlapping pieces together to make a super cute card like this. I think that turned out really cute. I hope you like it. Hey, if you like my videos, please subscribe. I see a lot of you that come that aren't really subscribed, and I'm trying to get up to 30,000 subscribers. I'm really, really starting to get close. So please subscribe so I can get there. It's just a goal I have. So again, thanks for joining me for a cup of today. I hope that you're enjoying your day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.